Hi, this is Dr. Mark Agresti. I wanted to do this video on Alzheimer's disease. Um, my practice is more young people, but the way I come in contact with Alzheimer's disease is the caretakers of Alzheimer's disease. This is the biggest problem in my practice. This is the illness that will affect all of us. This illness is where all the money for research should go. I see all the problems with this particular illness. Alzheimer's disease is where we need to put all our research funding and it's going to have the biggest impact and is having the biggest impact on, uh, I, I think, us as a society. Alzheimer's is a chronic uh, dementia. So what percent of people get it? One in 10 people get it by 65. 40% of people get it by 85. So what do we mean when we say dementia? Well, the first thing that goes is recent memory. What you had for breakfast, what you just said. Those are the first early warning signs. Also, uh, word finding. You forget the word. Oh, I need that thing that you make a note with. And I need that thing that you hold in your hand. You mean a pen? Yes, or they'll tell you things for example, well, I need a thing to cut with, and, and you're talking to them, um, they need a knife. They can't find basic words. And also, this is the initial signs. First thing is memory. You start seeing them get repetitious, word finding. What also you start seeing is procedural problems. Every night after dinner, they would, uh, someone would be there, uh, would throw out the garbage. Well, then they forget to throw out the garbage or they're like would load the dishwasher without putting the dishwasher soap in it or they would go to get the mail but not get the mail and then they'd be like well why did you walk outside to the mailbox oh i went meant to get the mail and then they go do it again the the average length of time is about 20 years it's actually getting longer from the diagnosis to the point of death it is a terminal illness and it it's it can last a long time and it's very painful on the families the loved ones and I'll get into that in a minute but also the treatment the treatments were based on the acetylcholine hypothesis meaning it was considered to be in a shortage of acetylcholine in the brain there are drugs out there tacrine don donepezil Rivastigmine, galantamine, nemantine. Uh, the first four I mentioned are all acetylcholine esterase inhibitors. The other one is a glutamate blocker, but none of them work. Maybe they temporarily slow the progression down a little bit. No treatment works. There is no treatment for Alzheimer's disease. Nothing good's out there. That whole theory about um, acetylcholine being deficient, it, I don't think it's right. It's old, it's not really applied now. What they think now is it may be amyloid B plaques forming in your brain, and this happens 10 years before the sign of the illness, and these plaques could initially be uh, part of the brain walling off viruses, fungus, yeast, bacteria, but somehow when they build up too much, you get Alzheimer's disease. There's also something called tau protein tangles building up, I'm not quite sure what the significance of that is. So we have this problem with the diagnosis of Alzheimer's. It really is only made on your death when they biopsy your brain, they see these tau tangles and the amyloid B plaques and they say, that person has Alzheimer's disease. Right now the diagnosis is made through a clinical interview, draw a picture, they try and draw a clock and they, they lose the uh, ability and the abstract ability to make a clock or a stick person they can't draw pictures they, they have memory issues neuropsychiatric testing can be employed and you find out the deficiencies but really definitive diagnosis has always been autopsy at death they look at the brain they see amyloid b plaques they see tau tangles there's some other uh, i've read literature on you know you lose your smell sense of smell and the onset of alzheimer's i think that's true I think the current theory now is that when these amyloid B plaques form in your brain, that is pretty much diagnostic of an oncoming Alzheimer's disease. 
Now, what are the causes? Genetics. If you have loved ones who have genetic history of Alzheimer's disease, the odds are you're much higher incidence of you getting it. That'd be number one. They're linking with obesity, diabetes, high cholesterol, decreased exercise, uh, coronary artery disease, history of head trauma, history of head injury. All those increase the incidence of Alzheimer's disease. Things that help it, exercise, a low inflammation diet, uh, mind games, socialization, all things say minimize your risk and help you. Now the biggest issue with Alzheimer's disease that I'm finding is the caretakers. Um, I, I'm currently treating many of the caretakers of Alzheimer's disease. Here's an interesting fact. Caretakers of Alzheimer's disease have a higher incidence of Alzheimer's. Also, Usually it's a loved one, and I've seen the tightest knit, most dedicated family members bring them to their knees. It's a 24-7 job. And also, these people are dying slowly. It's death by a thousand wounds. Every day you meet them, and you talk to them, it's something different. <clears throat> they forget who you are. They, I had one woman, and she had... Her father has Alzheimer's disease. He made a pass at her. He would never do that. It's not him. So you're mourning the loss of your loved one. And the schedule is unrelenting. It's 24-7. They'll wake up in the middle of the night and with pajamas on or no clothes, walk outside, take their clothes off and just walk away for no reason. That happened to me a few days ago. It is grueling. And they slowly, very capable people like Ronald Reagan slowly become unable to feed themselves, dress themselves, and socially they can no longer maintain friends, they become isolated, they can't do their job, it progresses to a horrific nightmare. And then it's like Groundhog's Day, it's Groundhog Day, everything keeps happening the same every day. They get into the same rituals, it's very painful, they have to be watched 24-7. I get into a whole chapter in my book, Tales from the Couch, about what happens to the caretakers with Alzheimer's disease. It is so expensive. It is so common in our society. We have to put money towards this. It is the biggest fear in my practice. I would say there is no illness that scares me as much as Alzheimer's disease. Cancer, uh, other illnesses, depression, bipolar, you name it. There's no illness I could think of that has the impact and that will have the future impact as our society ages and becomes an older society that Alzheimer's will have on us. We have to deal with this illness and this should we should attack this like we attack the HIV, the AIDS illness, like we attack cancer. You can get breast cancer. You're probably going to be fine. Alzheimer's, uh-uh. You're not going to be fine. So that's my little spiel on Alzheimer's. Thank you. Bye.